John Southurst with BitsOnline.com, where cryptocurrency and technology media meet the future. We're here at the North American Bitcoin Conference 2018 in Miami, and I have a special guest here. This is Bianca Chen. She's come all the way from China. She's the uh, CEO and founder of the uh, TV production studio OX3, and they're making a documentary about uh, entrepreneurship in the States here, and in particular, all the activity here at the conference. So, Bianca, nice to have you. Thank you so much for having me today. So, can you tell me, what's your, what's your background in this? Do you, uh, do you know anything about the blockchain industry? Oh, yeah. Um, I um, had a TV background. Um, after I graduated from school, I, I joined the TV and I worked for Thomson Reuters TV right. for uh, many years. And in 2011, um, some of my friends, they started to do like little coin stuff. And they asked me if I know about this. <laughs> At the moment, I was like, Bitcoin, never heard about it. I know like silver coin, gold coin, but not Bitcoin. Right. So I started to learn about it. And then I started to to write a story about it and even do like TV coverage about it. That's how I get into this whole field. And uh, since last year, um, I, I'm so interested in like the growing blockchain industry. So I started to produce this uh, documentary series, which is called Next, the Blockchain Revolution uh, from the summer of 2017. Right. And this is going to launch next month in February. Oh, we are going okay. to have eight episodes and uh, we'll release gradually. So and uh, hope to give uh, the viewer um, a chance to know about the history, the people involved, and the significance of this new wave. Excellent, yeah. So this this conference in particular, this this was always famous as being a, a Bitcoiner conference. <laughs> But uh, I think it's it's kind of morphed into something a little broader than that. I see mm -hmm. a lot of ICOs, yes. just you know, non-blockchain companies, mm -hmm. blockchain-like companies. Mm -hmm. What have you noticed just talking to people and interviewing people here? Anything mm -hmm. interesting? Yeah, recently, like when you go to any uh, blockchain or coin-related conference, you will notice there are a lot of people who are doing ICOs. You are, you are hearing a lot of like projects like this. Yeah. So I think that in, in one way you can feel the, the booming industry, like more people are looking into the segment and trying to find an opportunity or trying to do something about it. I think that's that's uh, that's the positive side. And also um, on the other hand you will feel like this is a, this is a little crazy like there's um, a craze yeah. in this uh, in this field mm -hmm. but I think that ma that can be the growing pain you have to go through right like if you want to like the internet if you want to find the Google Amazon you have to fail many many companies I think now people are trying to figure out what's the real way or what's the uh, the real model right. of our crypto economy because nobody did that before so and yeah, that's my feeling interesting yeah so of the of the people you've spoken to mm -hmm. Do you think they're uh, mostly going to be around in five or ten years' time? We have been talking with many people. Um, I don't think I don't think most of them will be around like for three to five years. Right. And my feeling is like some strong uh, players will stay, and also some uh, project will evolve. Maybe they are they think they can be this today, mm -hmm. but it will change gradually into something else, and or they will merge, or they'll trying to find the, the, the correct way. Um, but also there are some players I think they will stay much longer. Like Bitcoin is, is still around, right? It is. Yeah, right? Yeah. And a lot of things are still, like exchanges, I think mm -hmm. some of them will stay, right? And uh, some of the applications and Ethereum, this kind of fundamental infrastructure will stay. Yeah, yeah I think so too. It's just a matter of finding out who. <laughs> <laughs> so I also wanted to ask you about China. Yeah, since sure. that's where you're uh, coming from. Mm -hmm. And I think a couple of years ago, we saw a lot of Chinese companies trying to break into this space. And their biggest concern was just marketing their product to, to Western markets. Now, these days, I think um, the regulation's really unfavorable in China and they're, they're all moving offshore. Like, do you think China still has a role to play in all of this? Um, and from my observation, first I'm, I'm based in New York and right. I, I spend some time in China and I talk with a lot of projects and uh, found, founders in China. So my feeling is, um, I think actually more Chinese companies are going global because of the, uh, the, uh, the regulatory um, uh, pressure from the government. So more companies are looking into the, the bigger global market. I think that's the right move. 
Yeah. Like you know, um, for cryptocurrency, the beauty is decentralization. So, um, if you want to be truly decentralized, I think you have to be global. That's that's the the right way to go. Yeah. And also, I think for the um, the the government, they need time to digest. They need time to adjust what's going on. Especially if this is a, a, a country with more than a billion population. So, so I think gradually, government will have a certain way to embrace this new technology. And I think government doesn't. They they are afraid of the cryptocurrency, but they are actually embracing blockchain technology. Like for example, I think um, Central Bank of China is testing their own. Um, Cryptocurrency themselves, so, that, yeah. so I think that they have um, they have they are belief in the technology, but it just takes time for them yeah. to 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 do the right things and to embrace it. Yeah. It's it's funny in a way they're kind of forcing the Chinese companies to um, to go global. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think yeah, for Chinese company, I don't think that's a bad thing. No, I, I don't think, think it's yeah, a bad yeah, thing either. Yeah, I think it's um, it's uh, it's like um, giving them um, a force to push them to yeah. go global. Yeah. yeah, the domestic market's so big, it, it's very comfortable for them to just yeah, stay yeah, there. Yeah, and so yeah. That. Too comfortable sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay, well, thanks a lot. And um, tell us, where can we find out more about the project you're working on now? Sure, um, uh, we have um, we have a YouTube channel called OX3 um, Productions, and also our Twitter OX3 Production, so right. you can find us there. And also, we are on China Education Channel, and in China, China you can find us on. Uh, Weibo, uh, WeChat, uh, Tencent, Youku, like just You're find us. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, fantastic. Do check that out. That was uh, Bianca Chen of OX3 Productions, and this is John Southurst for BitsOnline.com. See you next time.